Good morning, everybody. It's Drive School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and joining me again today is uh, my good buddy, Pastor Matt Richard. How you doing? Hanging in there, Harrison. As I was mentioning, we're we're we just finally moved uh, to a new place here, south of Minot, and uh, kind of uh, moving property around, trying to be a good steward of property. And it's uh, it's one of those headaches you have. You know, there's there's good blessings in life that cause stress, and that's one of those things. So I really can't complain. You know, but even though right. it is causing stress, but yeah, it is what it is, right? It's just not that's really an easy way to move. Yeah. yeah, even when it's just a little hop, that's just yeah, yeah. Yeah. So as my son says, it is what it is, dad. And I'm like, yeah, he is. It's, it is, it is, you know, so God be praised that we have a place to live that, 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 uh, yeah, God be praised. So, yeah. Well, and I guess it's also Lent, so that's not going to bring any, anything extra at all either. Right. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's good. It's good. Fair enough. Well, since it is Lent, um, one of the things that uh, Jesus talks about is is sort of when you fast, sort of not not that you do it to be saved, but he's assuming something's happening here, that when it comes to Lent, we, we talk about discipline a little bit more. And so there, there's some context to this. Uh, what does Jesus say about about discipline, Pastor? Yeah, you know, I'm drawn often to this uh, story of the vine and the branches, right? Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And if a branch does not bear good fruit, uh, you cut it off, right? And so if we think about that illustration of a vine and a branch, uh, by cutting that branch off, you don't become more in the vine, right? You don't, you don't become more of a vine or, or if a, if a tree is bearing bad fruit, if you cut off the bad fruit, you don't, you don't say, oh, well, so now become more of an apple tree. You're already an apple tree. Um, but if it bears bad fruit, then the bad fruit needs to be cut off. And so this idea of discipline you know, the self-discipline, it's not necessarily to obtain something, right? But it's from the basis of who you already are. The Apostle Paul talks about this. The Apostle Paul talks all about this idea of being sanctified. And so when we're sanctified uh, in Christ, this is something that we've been given already. And uh, we're completely holy by our baptisms. And so because we're holy and because of the status of who we are as holy people, then what happens? Uh, we, dis- we, we, we discipline, we self-control uh, the passions of the sinful nature, uh, cutting that off and repenting in self-control and so forth uh, to stay put, to stay where we're actually at. Right. So you are made an apple tree in your baptism. You are made something new. The, the old has passed away, the new has come. The old Adam is, is uh, drowned and the new man daily emerges and arises to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. It, it, this is who you are now. Um, but the apple tree is pruned not to make it an apple tree. It's already an apple tree. But because like, do you really want an apple tree with like two apples on it? Or, or, or do, do you want some more? <laughs> Right, right. You know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to butcher the, the rephrasing of this, but I remember uh, this book hammer of God and mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's, there's a scene in there and, and I, again, I should probably read, it's been a couple of years, but long story short, there's, and, I, and like I said, I'm probably not going to hit the, the details of this exactly. It's been, like I said, several years since I've read it, but this, this idea where this man, <clears throat> he's going out and he gets in a fight, this farmer gets in a fight with another farmer about some cows or something like that. And, and anyway, this is quite a, a commotion and, and uh, his, his lips kind of unleash, you know, curses and wrath mm-hmm. upon another farmer over this. And anyway, the pastor comes up and he says to him something to the effect, uh, how can lips that tasted the body and blood of Christ, where the, the life-giving salvation was laid upon those lips, how can those very lips be proceeding forth these curses and this wretched uh, filth that comes out of the mouth? That's not who you are. And I'm often reminded too of something my father once said to me, and I and again I can't remember for the life of me, this idea about uh, I did something out of line. I've mentioned this before numerous times to individuals uh, that I've done, I did something that I can't remember. I was out of line of some sort, and then my dad said, you know, man, this is not who you are. You're Richard. This is not who we are. It's not what we do. And it's appealing to to who we are in Christ and and who we are as holy ones, sanctified in Jesus, and so. This self-control, this discipline, this um, um, uh, this work against our old Adam through confession and repentance and, and, and curbing the old Adam is all done to maintain this identity of who we are as the holy baptized as Christians, uh, remembering that we are good trees in our baptism. And when we see bad fruit, we, we war against it. We, we battle against it. We prune it. Um, and through confession and repentance and the absolution of Christ uh, to hear that good gospel so that we may bear forth good fruit, fruit that the Holy Spirit produces and we simply bear. 
Yeah. Um, and that, that rephrases the whole conversation because this isn't a do this or else you're out. Uh, this isn't a you are somehow better if you do more of it. But it's just a, it's a reframing of the picture. If, if this is who you are, you actually get a better picture of what is good now. Um, and, and this is true in the rest of the world, too. When we talk about discipline outside of the church as well, nobody is uh, pursuing discipline because it's fun. But, but soldiers pursue discipline uh, because they recognize that if they're just going to go with what feels right at the moment, bad things can happen. And so we need to sort of re- frame the, 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 the vision and into something broader so that uh, we don't just go based off of what seems like a good idea at the time, but but following orders, even in, in scary times. Uh, we, we discipline our, our bodies, our, our, our diets, uh, as so many other places with, with exercise, and it doesn't sort of make you more human, but it's a recognition that, well, if I live 10 years longer because I take some walks and, and lift weights once in a while so my heart doesn't give out maybe I can spend more time with my family and that's a good thing. It, I would rather eat Cheetos, but, but discipline doesn't make me more me. It just lets me enjoy more in the long run. And so much so here too, when, when we actually start to see God's law as a good gift, because while well, it comes from a good God, I get to sort of stop and, and recognize, is this actually who I am in the moment? Because I get so caught up in my sin that I actually need something to come along and say, this isn't as good as it feels right now. Let's, let's look at more. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that the law is good, right? Paul says this, the law yeah. is good. If- one uses it correctly and understanding that the law is God's not trying to be just some sort of killjoy, right? He, he doesn't look at uh, Harrison and Matt and say, you know, I'm going to give you these 10 commandments to ruin your life and make, to make you, you miserable feel bad about just, yourself. just to make you feel bad. Right. And so, you know, these 10 commandments, they, they're protecting good gifts, right? I mean, so fourth commandment, uh, honor mom and dad. Why? Because he's protecting the gift of authority, you know, uh, do not murder. Why? Because life is a gift. It's a wonderful gift. Uh, do not commit adultery because marriage and children and a family is a wonderful gift. Don't mess it up. Uh, you know, go through all of this, uh, uh, you know, as far as uh, do not steal, because property is a gift to us that we are meant to be good stewards of. Uh, go down to Eighth Commandment, uh, give false testimony. God wants to give us the gift of a of a good reputation and so forth. Uh, and then coveting, right? God's protecting the gift of contentment. He wants us to be content, have life, have a good marriage, um, have a good reputation, uh, living with an authority, with authority that has good control um, and peace and order. These are all good things. And our old Adam likes to be like that kid at the at the uh, beach that <laughs> destroys the sandcastle. You know, the, the part of you that just comes along and sees that sandcastle, you just want to stomp on and destroy it. That, that's the old Adam that wants chaos and wants sin to reign. And the law exposes these good gifts as well as, uh, you know, this old Adam that wants to destroy it. And then through repentance and faith, the old Adam is put down, put under, uh, drowned and died and dying in our baptisms uh, daily um, as we live in him. Right. I, I love this because it, it discipline is not a putting off of grace or a not needing grace anymore, but it's simply recognizing you ask a simple question. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? And, and then you, you pursue a greater good, um, not because it saves you, but because this is, this is good. Yeah. Well, and this all ties into what Paul says too about being sober minded, right? To being alert, mm-hmm. to being awake. That, yeah. Yeah. We talked a lot about that. And I just, I just love that idea of being, being, being aware and in the moment and understanding that, that we are holy because of Jesus. We're mm-hmm. baptized into Christ. We're part of the kingdom of light. And to be sober minded is to then look at um, one's life to understand the devil and the world and the sinful Adam that wars against us. And then to be able to call a thing what it is and say, no, this is this is evil, right? Evil either in me or evil that's happened to me or evil that the devil's stirring up in me. And to call for what is it and say, Lord Jesus, create in me a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me. Help me to war against these things that are not of you, uh, to repent boldly. Um, as as we journey to our grave, ultimately, as we journey to eternal life, when we will no longer be uh, exposed to this old Adam, the sinful nature, and the devil will be put afar off forever, bound up, and that we will live with uh, eternity with our Lord.